what we do for ourselves depends on what we think of ourselves. What we think of ourselves depends on what we know of ourselves. And what we know of ourselves depends on what we have been told, that's to say about ourselves. So once you've been told about yourself, then you will know a lot about yourself. Then you will think a lot about yourself. Then you'll be ready to do for yourself, which is to protect yourself against any enemies. You understand? So this is what we are about in Capoeira. We are about letting people understand that it's sometimes people don't need to know all the things that you are able to do. They will think you're just here. Oh, I'm an old man. I need my game. But the real Capoeira is when you can pull something out that looks like it wasn't even there in the first place. that they say in Brazil they say capoeira é luta para quem é lutador capoeira é luta para quem é lutador as I said capoeira is a fight for the one who is a fighter by the same token you can say capoeira is a dance for the one who is a dancer for another one you can say capoeira is acrobatics for the one who is a gymnast so whatever you bring to the table that's what capoeira will be to you so I'll say that from the outset um, for me personally I deal with capoeira as a combat science. Now when I say science, I mean something that can be experimented on, something that can be tested to see how it's effective, when it's effective, in what context it's effective, against who it's effective, uh, and all of those types of things. So that's what we do every single time we spar. We don't deal with belts or cords or anything like that. We see a rank every single time that we spar. So if you are fighting someone and you defeat that person, we know what your rank is in relation to that person or vice versa overall the principle is to attack without being attacked right so I'm able to attack you but you're never able to attack me you understand you can never lose if you follow that principle and that's the core principle of capoeira that's what gave birth to all the movements so if you see a person moving in this direction or moving in that direction the idea is I'm not going to be attacked so I'm moving out of there so that I'm not attacked I'm moving out of here However, I'm able to attack you, you understand? If you follow that principle, you will never ever be defeated, you understand? The other side of it is the idea of ma'at, right? In ancient times, this is uh, truth, justice, order, balance, righteousness, harmony, reciprocity. But the idea of propriety is doing the appropriate thing at the appropriate time, you understand? So even outside of the fight context, I may even decide that there's no need to fight over this small you know, thing. So doing the appropriate thing at the appropriate time can be in the fight context, it can also be in a non-fight context. But when it's in the fight context, it comes down to attacking without being attacked, you understand? Working on my timing so that I'm out of the way when yours is coming and you're in the way when mine is coming. So, you know, when I say combat science, there are certain things that are taught in capoeira or in anything where they just tell you, do this move. And sometimes they tell you to do the move, but they don't tell you the full context in which it will be applicable. So you see people who do moves because they think it looks pretty, it looks cute. So they'll be hopping, they'll be clapping, they'll be flipping. Now some of these people, they are doing their flips or whatever, it looks cute. But now when they're in an actual fight and they try to do those things, they find that their nose is bloody. They find that their shoulder is dislocated. But the thing is, you know, you're doing the thing because you think it looks pretty. But with a science, you're testing and seeing will this work in this context? When you see in this context it doesn't work, then you just simply, you know, adjust. So that's the way I, I see capoeira. In Chi, we refer to it as asa kun. And that is coming from asa, which is dance, kun, which is fight. So when we say this, we say asa kun, and then the person will respond with okonsa, which is the same thing, just in reverse, so fight, dance. And basically, you know, there's this, um, you know, fraudulent story where, you know, the whites in Brazil will say, Oh, they, the black people, they disguise their thing in a dance so that the white people wouldn't know what's going on. When you read the primary text, the whites are like, this thing, we have to ban it. These people are killing. The, the whites are not deceived that this thing is, you know, hidden in a dance as one. But then if you look at the syntax of black combat sciences, and I'm not saying martial arts because, again, when you say martial, this is derived from the term Mars. Now, who is Mars or what is Mars? Mars is a Roman god of war. 
and when you find out that the oldest depictions are found found at Monet Khufu and what was called Kemet that's what we now refer to as ancient Egypt the land of black people that this dates to over 5,000 years ago now 5,000 years ago where was Rome there was no Rome there was no such thing as a Rome much less a Mars which is a Roman god of war so why in the world would we call our thing martial arts or martial anything when we understand that we were doing these things long before there was Mars or any of those things but mainly we deal with those types of things because of you know a lack of understanding but to come back to the point when we talk about how African people do combat you'll find that all throughout the continent you'll see Zulu warriors and they have their war dance right these are the moves that they're doing when they're fighting when they're doing with the spear and you see it they're moving it's not I stand still I do my kata ha 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 this is not how African people fight now take from Zulu war dances now come to Muhammad Ali in the ring you see when he is young He's up there, he's moving, he's sticking, he's moving, he's dancing, bam, bam, bam. He says, um, in the ring I can stay until I'm old and gray because I know how to hit and dance away, right? So this is exactly what he's talking about is something that goes back into ancient times. You can find Asafo, where we do Asafo flag dancing here in Ghana. And all the moves are warrior moves. If you do this and you have a spear in your hand, the person will know. If you do this and you have a sword in your hand, the person will know. If you do it and even if you have a flag in your hand, all the crowd will be at a distance because they understand that all of those things can be in their eye, upside their head, all of those sides. So they understand. Um, so in the dance is the fight. If you look at Dambe, which is what they do, the Hausa people do, and you'll see that as they're doing, they're doing this type of thing. If you go to Martinique, you'll see uh, Laja and they're doing this type of move, they're rocking, they're rocking, and then they do their kick, they're rocking, they're rocking. If you look at the United Snakes when we do uh, slap boxing, that's what I grew up with. So we're up there, we're doing this type of thing, we're doing this, we're not, hurt, hurt, hurt. that's a very white Eurasian, pale, Chinese, I don't know what thing to do. But for African people, we have a flow with it, we have a rhythm with it. If you look at anybody who's black who knows how to fight, then this is the type of thing that they do. If you look at a Floyd Mayweather, so I can go continent tip to tip. So this thing about, oh, they, they started to dance because the whites wouldn't know that they were dancing. First, that's not borne out by primary source text. And then second, that is completely fraudulent because throughout space and throughout time, you see African people moving in this way. So it's a combat science. And part of the science is knowing that it is easier to move something that's already in motion then to come from static and now start to react and then jerk and hurt and all of those types of things. So what we do is that we're redirecting the energy. I'm already moving with what looks like a dance. So now all I have to do is just, you know, keep moving all around, right? So, very good. So the rhythm is one, also the song, what's being sung can also drive what's going on. So it's very similar to what you'll find at Akom where the drummer is like looking at the feet of the person and they're seeing what the person is doing and it's like a relationship. If this person wants the drum to change, they may move to the next thing and the drum will know, okay, it's time to go or they may start spinning or vice versa so the, the drummer can call this person to spin, the person can start spinning now the drummer knows but -dum, but -dum, but -dum. So whatever the case may be. Um, so there's definitely a relationship. Oftentimes in the songs, the songs are talking about what's going on. So let's say one person is here and then they get swept and now that you can see the person is obviously mad you may start singing a song like oh menino shoro yeah 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 porque no mamo yeah 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 cala boca menina yeah 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 menina danada yeah 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 menina mama so you just go through so it's like the baby is crying because the baby doesn't have a breast to suck on you know cry 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 shut your mouth little baby cry 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 so it's like you know this type of thing so what's going on now the musician is reacting to what's going on which will even get that person more you know angry but then you have different what are called tokens and that one is you know what you're playing so you have so this is angola now usually this one is marked by slow movements this one is marked by you know intricate sometimes you know what's referred to as play so they're going through back and forth you'll see this and you know it's like chess of the body if you understand what chess is about because if i do this you have to know what the response is it's a call and response just like we can do orally i go i mean the same thing so if my foot is coming and you don't know the response it means that you're going to get your jaw kicked off the response is to be out of there and 
set off your own kick at that same time. You know, one of the issues is that um, the Eurasians, these Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese, they have a lot of PR, you understand, in terms of movies and all of these types, Confucius Institutes, you name it, Korea this, all of these types of things, Chinatown, that. Um, and that really, you know, helps their cause to the point where young, you know, Africans, you know, youth in school or whatever, they will have heard of Taekwondo and Karate and now Kung Fu or Wushu, whatever, but they won't have heard of the African combat science. But then sometimes, oh, uh, yeah, that's from Tekken. Oh, I saw that in this one movie. Okay, okay, yeah. No. But, you know, just in terms of a disparity and familiarity, that they tend to be much more familiar with the things that are non-African or even anti-African and not familiar with the ones that are here. However, I will say this, we're running, um, as you know, the UNESCO project, the open school. As soon as the children get exposed to it, they grab it, they love it, they feel it, they feel the movements, they feel the dance, the fluidity, they feel everything. And, you know, that's really, I think, where the future is, especially in Africa. You know, when we go to the Chalewate Festival and we just are on the street with the children, the children love it. They will not go anywhere as long as you are there. If you stay there for five hours, they will be with you and it will be just more and more, dozens and dozens. So we're just on the street informally. We haven't gotten a permit. We just are teaching the children their own combat science and they feel it inside of them. And what it's like is it's less of teaching them and it's more like them remembering something that they connect to, you know, on a very deep level. So that's that. So we have our Capoeira classes. Uh, we started doing it every day of the week at my place, which is in West Legon, but the uh, ones that are more open to the public are here at the University of Ghana at the Sports Directorate. We meet Saturdays at 11 a.m. And, you know, with it, you will learn the moves, but we also try to get people to understand the principles. This just some of these ideas of like attacking without being attacked. Again, you can join us. Also, we have the uh, Android app. The iOS app is coming soon. Abibi Fahodie, that's spelled A-B-I-B-I-F-A-H-O-D-I-E. Abibi Fahodie, that's Black Liberation in Chi. We also have the website that you can go to. And the website is very social, so it has a news feed and everything. You can post your pictures of yourself doing Capoeira. Follow the videos that we have on there as well. And that one is the same, abibifahodie.com. So if you go to that one, you can also connect with us doing Capoeira here in Accra. And basically what we're trying to do is get people to have a self-protection mentality.